I know where my parents are. They're in, um, oh, what's it called? The place, uh, you, uh, soap and lotion? Open, Open ocean. ocean. Open ocean. Open ocean? I know where that is. That's the exhibit located right next to, I don't care. I play this disgruntled octopus named Hank. And he's um, born in captivity in this kind of script. It's a, sort of like the scripts, I, I think. And um, <clears throat> like sea aquarium thing. And he, he wants to be left alone. He doesn't like anybody and he wants to be alone. So he's trying to get to Cleveland, Ohio, where they have a place where he could just be isolated because where he is, they sometimes put him into the, the petting uh, area where kids can touch him and, he, and he, he's, he's phobic. So uh, that's his main concern. He wants to get out, but he, he doesn't want to go. He's never been in the open ocean or he was born in captivity. So it's all he knows. <gasps> What's that? That there is bad news. It's a transport tag for fish who can't cut it inside the Institute. They get transferred to permanent digs, an aquarium. He meets Dory and Dory has a tag and that tag means she's going to Cleveland. So he finds out through the brief conversation that she has uh, the memory problem and can't find her. She's looking for her parents. So he says, well, I know this place inside and out, and I can probably find your parents. But if I do, I want that tag. So it, originally, it's a, um, you know, you wash my hand, I'll wash yours. And so that was, that was the uh, genesis of their relationship. They sort of need each other. I remember my family! They're out there somewhere. Have to find them. Guys, you gotta help me. Guys, guys, hello? I would listen to Ellen. You know, they would play me things. And, and uh, she's so lovable in, in, the, in the film that it's easy, really, to... to work those scenes out with her in mind. You know, you're thinking what her reactions are gonna be, or you know, you don't really know exactly, but it's sort of, uh, it makes it easier to do if you know it's, it's someone like her, you know, cause you, you like her, you know, and you, um, it's even easy to be, to be mad at her for a while, you know, and to ball her out and stuff, you know, and you get these wonderful reactions. I really can't oh, echo locate. I cannot have this conversation again. I, I hit can't. my head very hard out there. See how swollen it is? Your head is supposed to be big. You're a beluga. It's almost better than real life. I mean, it's, it's so amazing how they mimic reality, <clears throat> but yet they want you to still have that feeling that it's not. You know, it, you know they probably could do it and make it look absolutely real. Because some of the shots where some of the people are walking through the exhibits and so forth, they look like real people. Do you know what I mean? But um, I think that's done on purpose, and I think everything they do is on purpose. Uh, and so you need to, I mean, the, the enjoyment for me is the fact that you know it's animated at all times, but it's just, it's just mind staggering when you, you, know, you think, how did they do this? And so, yeah, I mean, I'm blown away by it. Oh, oh, get, get off the road! Get off the road! You know it! Oh, 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 Don't you worry about a thing. I just think that they're going to be delighted. And that's really the whole point of movies, plays, television. I think to delight first. And uh, whatever happens after that is, is, is a is fine, but I think it's that, that delight factor, you know, for children and adults, I think everybody wins on this one.